Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. What you've just witnessed is what happens when a Federal 124 grain punch jacketed hollow points hits a two liter bottle three quarters of the way full of water. It would have been more dramatic if I'd bothered to fully fill the bottle, but I was just going to destroy it anyway, so I didn't see the point. What caused that bottle to burst apart is hydrostatic shock. And this is something that used to come up very often in discussions of stopping power. And it doesn't so much since the FBI released the results of their 30-year study of handgun incapacitation capabilities, but it used to come up all the time, and I thought we'd address that as a follow-up to my recent video on handgun stopping power. Hydrostatic shock happens, hydrostatic shock, happens because water can't compress. So when the bullet creates a shock wave passing through water, the water has no choice but to leave. And if there's nowhere for it to go, as in that two liter bottle, then it bursts the container apart. We are mostly water, and this strongly implies that this will have an effect on us too. And it does, and it doesn't. And we're going to dive into that. So, before we do, I'd like to thank my subscribers on Patreon. All of this costs money, and your contributions help more than you know. If you'd like to join my Patreon supporters, there is a link in the description below. I'd also like to take a moment to thank channel benefactors, who may or may not don donate money through Patreon, but they do make donations of ammo, parts, guns for me to show you and discuss and all manner of other things that help the channel. So thank you all as well. Now, back to hydrostatic shock. Um, the question is, does it matter? And the answer is, it can. More pertinent to this channel and the recent handgun stopping bar video is, does it matter with handguns? And the answer is no, unless it does. This has to do with the, the things that hydrostatic shock or the temporary wound cavity, as shown in this still image from high speed film, um, it does create a temporary cavity that lasts tiny fractions of a second, but is much larger than the bullet's diameter. And this effect is somewhat exaggerated in gel shots like this, but it is real and it does happen. Where it particularly happens is with high velocity bullets. And by high velocity, it varies depending on the bullet design and size, but typically somewhere around 2000 feet per second, this becomes a serious factor. The way hydrostatic shock affects a living creature that is shot, it can do this in two ways. The first way is neural shock. And medical studies have found that bullets can actually cause nerve damage at a remove from the point of impact and the path of the bullet in the permanent wound cavity. And this is because under the right circumstances, when a bullet hits close to a major nerve, the spine, things like that, the shock wave can strike the nerve with sufficient force to cause a small amount of damage, or more likely to basically stun the creature with the impact of the shock wave on the nerves. Now, this can happen with handguns, but it is a very, very unreliable mechanism for stopping an attacker or even a game animal. Um, it's, again, it's a matter of too many variables. It can happen. I've seen it happen, but it is the exception rather than the rule. Now, the case where I saw it happen was I shot a deer with my 44 Magnum revolver and the bullet struck the shoulder right where I'd aimed and passed through the lungs and did a fair amount of damage. 
And this was going to kill the animal. Absolutely. The immediate effect, however, was that the deer looked, I can only describe it as baffled as to what just happened, and tried to run away and realized it couldn't. Now, I don't like animals to suffer and bullets are cheap, so I put a second round through its heart, striking the lower ventricle of the heart, lower left ventricle of the heart, and the top of the aorta, and the animal dropped instantly straight down. The first shot, which hit bone and passed through mostly lung tissue, was a lethal shot, but it did not stop the animal. The second shot, for whatever reason, produced neural shock that basically knocked the animal out. And of course, it immediately went into physical shock and died um, over the course of, you know, a short interval. And you often see this with shots of high-powered rifles on game animals. The bullet hits and they drop straight down, like their legs have been cut out from under them. And this is a fairly reliable mechanism when talking about high-powered rifle bullets. There are pistols that can produce this effect more reliably than others, and they are generally very rare. Very hot loaded, 5.7 by 28 can produce this, and um, 7.5 FK. I have seen neural shock hits on video of game animals being shot from this. And um, this is basically a direct result of hydrostatic shock, but most handgun projectiles are too small and going too slow and have too little energy to reliably produce this effect. Um, my hit on the deer was enough of an anomaly that I noted it immediately and was like, that's neural shock. Usually you only see that from rifles. So that's one mechanism that can contribute to stopping a game animal or an attacker with hydrostatic shock, but with handguns, generally speaking, it is a very unreliable mechanism. Now, a good expanding hollow point of sufficient energy might increase your chance of this occurring, but there's plenty of evidence that, again, even in those cases, this is a very unreliable mechanism and it very rarely works that way in real life. The other method that the temporary wound cavity or hydrostatic shock can cause improved odds of stopping is by creating a larger permanent wound channel. Pistol bullets, even the magnums, are seldom energetic enough for this to occur. And this is what, ha what happens is the expansion rate of the temporary cavity exceeds the elastic limits of the tissue it's passing through, and it tears the tissue because it just expands too much too fast. And again, this is usually a thing we associate with rifle bullets. Um, it just basically doesn't happen with conventional handgun bullets or even hollow points, unless they're those very, very rare gun and cartridge combinations that get right around that 2,000 foot per second threshold. And um, essentially the FBI found instances of neural shock and hydraulic damage with handguns to be so rare as to not be worth considering when considering the incapacitation effect of pistol bullets. Now, from the other video, you know, we know the three things are penetration, because you have to get to the stuff you need to break, hit location, so that you actually hit the stuff you need to break, and last is the permanent wound cavity, and a larger permanent wound cavity is better. Now, with high-powered rifles or extreme velocity pistol ammunition, you can get a larger wound cavity 
from hydraulic damage. But again, I only know of two pistol cartridges that could reasonably reliably be said to be likely to produce this effect. So, <clears throat> it's not really worth worrying about the temporary wound cavity caused by hydrostatic shock with almost any conventional pistol ammunition. But for the last decade or more, there have been some unconventional pistol ammunition, actually unconventional bullets in conventional pistol ammunition, that do produce hydraulic damage. And those are the Lehigh Extreme Penetrator. These are monolithic copper bullets which have these flutes. They look kind of like a sawed-off Phillips screwdriver. And what happens is these bullets, because the rifling, are spinning very, very, very fast. And because they are monolithic copper, they tend to be lighter than conventional hollow points or other lead or jacketed ammo. So they're going faster than normal pistol bullets, and they have these flutes. Now, the theory is, and it does seem to be borne out in practice, is that the rotation of these flutes combined with the forward velocity creates enough velocity combined to cross the threshold into creating hydraulic damage. Um, in both gel and game animals, these produce the sort of wound tracks, permanent wound tracks, that you would normally associate with a good jacketed hollow point ammunition. It's not perfectly identical. There does tend to be a smaller burst of initial damage, but the overall zone of disruption tends to be longer. So for these, in a way, hydrostatic shock and hydraulic damage do matter. Now, one other advantage of these is that pretty much a hollow point that hits a solid barricade or a solid object or a windshield or things like that um, becomes not a hollow point. These continue to work after they penetrate auto glass, heavy bone, wood, sheet metal. The effect is not dependent on expansion and is less velocity dependent. It's still velocity dependent, but it's less velocity dependent than a conventional hollow point. And of course, you can see this is very odd looking. You can look up on YouTube. There are a lot of gel tests of this ammunition. Uh, bullets by the inch, Jim at Bullets by the Inch sent me some of these to test the other year, and I did test them for my blog. And the results in gel, after penetrating four layers of denim FBI spec type tests, were that they produced hollow point-like permanent wound cavities in the gel. I sent some to my friend Mike in Texas, who regularly has cause to shoot feral hogs, and he reported that it produced a wound that you would just normally associate with a nine millimeter jacketed hollow point in pig tissue. So there's every reason to believe that these actually work and produce results similar to a hollow point, but are barrier blind. They can't load up with uh, fabric and heavy clothing or fur. They seem to work. So are they the exception that proves the rule? They appear to be. I am impressed enough with my testing, Mike's testing, and other tests that I have been made aware of or have seen that I now use these as a carry load. But they're the only more or less standard velocity pistol ammunition 
that falls well below that 2,000 foot per second threshold, yet still seems to do hydraulic damage. So for these, it matters. For conventional pulse pistol bullets, you might produce neural shock. You might not. But conventional pistol bullets do not produce hydraulic damage. At least not hydraulic damage significant enough to make any difference in the permanent wound cavity. So, once again, we have a completely unsatisfactory answer. It doesn't matter unless it does. Life's like that a lot. Anyway, if you like this video, please take five seconds out of your busy life to hit the like button down below. It really helps the channel. And um, if you want to see more like this, subscribe and hit the notifications button. That also helps the channel. Anyway, this is just a pretty quick one, so I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.